We're here with the first electric Corvette, or should we say electrified Corvette. The C8 generation of the Corvette was always meant to push the boundaries of what an American sports car could be, taking the engine from where tradition said it belonged to where physics wants it, right in the middle. We didn't think that would be the only provocative move that this generation of the VET would make, and we were right. This is the Corvette E-Ray, and it adds two more things never before seen on the Corvette, a hybrid powertrain and all-wheel drive. Now traditionalists, they might turn their nose at something like this, but the argument that the E-Ray makes is speed, because this has the quickest acceleration stats of any Corvette ever. Today, we're going to look at how it does it and explain how it's a little bit different than the existing Z06 and Stingray models. But before we tell you more about the Corvette NSX, excuse me, we mean E-Ray, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and if you're looking to sell your car, head over to edmunds.com slash sellmycar for an instant cash offer. The E-Ray continues in the burgeoning automotive tradition that bothers me to no end of just slapping an E onto the front of a name to show that it's electrified. It sounds a bit too much like a place you'd bid on some memorabilia, but at least it's not the Corvette Mach-E, so we count our blessings. How does the E-Ray earn that extra initial? It's hybrid powertrain, which is comprised of two main parts. The first one is very familiar, an LT2 small block V8 making 495 horsepower and 470 pounds-feet of torque, just like it does in the entry-level Stingray model. Paired to the engine is a 1.9 kilowatt hour battery pack and a single electric motor, good for another 160 ponies and 125 pounds-feet of torque on its own. We'll do the math for you. That's 655 total system horsepower. The Z06 remains the most powerful Corvette with 670 horsepower. That's 15 more than the E-Ray. But there is a difference between the two in torque. Chevy didn't provide a total torque figure for the E-Ray since you can't simply add them together. The two don't quite work in concert like that. But they would say that it produces enough torque that it outpaces the Z06 by quite a bit. Another advantage for the E-Ray, that power gets sent to all four wheels. The gas engine drives the rear wheels and the electric motor drives the front, giving the coupe crazy shove off the line. That helps the E-Ray hit 60 miles an hour in just 2.5 seconds, and it continues on to demolish the quarter mile in 10.5. For having drastically different powertrains, the Z06 and E-Ray are very close when it comes to performance. According to Chevy, the all-wheel drive hybrid is 0.1 seconds quicker, both to 60 miles an hour and in the quarter mile. Those are claims we'll have to put to the test on our own track very soon. Let's take a closer look at this powertrain and see some of the changes Chevy made to the V8 for the E-Ray. And we'll start by using our ears, not our eyes. This clip is from a ride-along we got this week. Listen closely. What you're hearing is the V8 competing with, or I guess, enhancing the sound of the E motor. Now this sound is artificial and piped into the cabin via the speakers. It's a very different sound from the Z06's high revving whale that we love. And we said different, not better. The only way to turn off the electric noise in the cabin is to actually turn the exhaust down on the engine as well. So your two options are no electric noise, but no V8 as well, or you get both noises. That's too bad. When you want things quieter, the car fires up in stealth mode, which is basically, I like my neighbor's mode. You can leave your garage and head down the street in total silence. The E-Ray will run on electric power alone until you hit 45 miles an hour, or until the battery pack gets down to 20%. Heavy throttle inputs will also wake the V8 up, and you'll notice that there isn't a place to plug in the Corvette. The battery charges mostly from brake regeneration. If you're on a track, there's also a new Charge Plus drive mode, and that keeps the battery topped up for maximum performance over multiple laps through a combination of regenerative braking and using the engine to help charge the battery at speeds of over 15 miles an hour. So in theory, you can drive the E-Ray at full power for long periods of time. Another claim we look forward to trying out ourselves. You might be curious how all this is packaged, and it seems that the engineers really went out of their way to keep everything as compact as possible. The V8 is behind the seats as normal, and there's also a new lithium ion 12 volt battery in the front. So where is the battery pack? It's actually tucked in the tunnel between the front passengers, along with the rest of the electric components, as this cutaway shows. 
The battery is just 1.9 kilowatt hours, so it's not that big, about the size of a medium duffel bag. Placing it in that tunnel between the front passengers helps to lower the center of gravity of the car slightly and shifts the weight bias forward a touch. The E-Ray ends up weighing 340 pounds more than a Z06, but somehow, it's still quicker. Chevy also recalibrated the fuel system so that the car can run on four cylinders for longer periods of time. That's right, most of the time you see a Corvette, it's actually only using four cylinders, and now when you see one rolling down the street, it might only be using electric power. Visually, the E-Ray stands out from the rest of the Corvette pack with some different styling cues. It's 3.6 inches wider than the base Stingray, borrowing body panels from the Z06. But unlike the Z06's center quad exhaust, the E-Ray keeps them behind each wheel. There's also a unique rear fascia, along with bright electric blue badges. And if you really want to be shouty, Chevy offers a body stripe in the same electric blue color, only available on the E-Ray. This all-wheel drive VET comes on staggered 20 and 21 inch wheels with a unique five-spoke design. They're also wrapped in unique Pilot Sport all-season tires that were specially developed for this car by Michelin. If you want a summer tire, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's are available, unlike on the Z06 where they come standard. Now the summer tires do add a lot of grip. On a skid pad, Chevy says the E-Ray will pull 1.1 lateral Gs with the summer tire and 1.0 with the all seasons. This is also the first C8 to come standard with carbon ceramic brakes, and those will definitely come in handy when slowing down this heavier machine. The interior isn't drastically different from other C8 models, but there are a few things that are E-Ray specific. You can use this toggle switch here to go through all six of the different drive modes, including the Stealth and Charge Plus modes we discussed earlier. The digital gauge cluster shows the flow of power and where it's coming from. You can also see how efficient the car is over a road trip, for example. Less fun to brag about, but more fun for your bank account. Obviously, there's a lot more story to tell with the E-Ray, but that won't really come until we drive the car later this year. There is one more big thing that we can share with you now, though, and that is pricing. The E-Ray starts at just over $104,000, and that puts it at about two grand less than the Z06. Now, for some traditionalists, the Z06 will always be the answer, but we think that for a forward-thinking Corvette buyer, the E-Ray holds a lot of appeal. While this is the first Corvette to use electricity to enhance performance, we don't think it'll be the last.